Hey, welcome to this week's Home Experience Talk, and I want to say Happy Easter. If you're watching this on Easter Sunday, then you couldn't join us out at the beach. We miss you, but if you're watching this the week or so after Easter, I hope that you'll take this talk into your time with God, or better yet, I hope you're watching it with a couple of people that you can dive into the Word together, and we have questions after each talk. So I'm going to I'm going to jump right in because I want to talk about the resurrecting power of God, but I want to I want to insert well, what is your purpose in it? Like what is God's ultimate purpose for your life? And to do that, I want to remind you, I want to go all the way back to the Old Testament, and I want to remind you that God created us ultimately, right, to be favored sons and daughters of his. The Garden of Eden was created for us, for our pleasure, to be in relationship with God, to walk in the cool of the day. But we learned something about our nature because of two things. One, our free will. And two, that we have an enemy who is totally riddled in pride called Satan, who's whispering in our ear, telling us that God is holding out on us and he really doesn't have your best interest at heart. So you need to go and choose these things, right? That has literally been the history of the entire Bible. But if you go back to the days of Abraham and Noah, God's constantly trying to show us like, look, I bless you. I favor you. If you will simply follow me, if you will simply be my children and obey my commands, you will live an abundant, amazing, rich life. And I'm not just talking about possessions, but everything will be taken care of and you will not have to live a life of anxiety and depression. We live right now in a society that is riddled with anxiety and depression. And I'm going to tell you the reason why that is, is because you don't understand your very purpose is to live in that place of rest as a son or a daughter of the Most High God. So I want to take you all the way back to Exodus when God gives Moses the Ten Commandments. And as we read through Exodus, it's not just the Ten Commandments. He gives these directions for how we're supposed to live our life in a lot of different areas. And do you know why he does it? Here's the, the reason in Exodus 23, 25. This is what God is asking us to do. Worship the Lord your God, meaning put worth and value in him first. That's the first commandment in the Bible, right? Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be, ready, on your food and water. People worry about provision all the time. I will take away sickness from among you. People worry about their health. It's a huge top, top one or two reasons. And none will miscarry or be barren in your land. People want to carry on the legacy of their family. They want to have kids. And finally, I will give you a full lifespan. People worry about death. They worry about their life being cut short. So they live in fear all the time. I see so many people living in fear. Right here, it says, look, if you'll just follow my way, I'll take care of your food, your water, your health, children, which is a blessing, and a full lifespan. Why do we worry? Why? Because we don't understand that our very purpose is to live in that place with God. And then he takes it one step further because when Jesus came, he invites us into that beautiful work of building the kingdom right here in this World. I want to illustrate that with a story of Lazarus. And I'm going to pick it up in John chapter 11. It says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. Remember, this is the lady that did that. So she was obviously aware and worshiped Jesus as a king. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. They had some faith. Lord, the one you love is sick. Now I want you to think about something because it's easy to have faith when we have a glimmer of hope, right? At this point, Lazarus is still alive. And so they're, but it obviously didn't look good. It, did, it wasn't progressing well. And so they sent for Jesus, hoping that Jesus could do something. Let's continue to read what happens. 
When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So stop for a second. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So if you really loved somebody and you knew they were really sick and you could do something about it, in my opinion, I think the best thing to do is be to go right away. Like, it's not showing a lot of love if you wait a little bit. You want to go right away. So what happens? <laughs> so, so when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. Okay, this is a principle that you have to understand about God and why this would take away anxiety and worry in your life. See, our human thinking is that it would be best to go now. But Jesus knows there's a better plan. There's a bigger plan. There is a long-term plan that his job is to bring glory to the Father and that the Father is going to bring glory to the Son. Ready? So that we can participate in his resurrection work on this earth, in this kingdom. It's an amazing thing. So he says, let's go back to Judea. What do you think his disciples' reactions? Well, they would certainly trust Jesus. has been walking with them. They've seen him do amazing miracles. Well, not exactly. John chapter 11, verse 8, they said, but Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you're going to go back? There are two instances in the book of John where they were ready to stone him literally on the spot. And they had to kind of like get out of there. And now Jesus is saying to go back to that place. They're like, yeah, I don't think so. What were they concerned about? Pride, their own selves, their own lives. They're trying to advise the king of the universe. Do you ever do that in your life? You think you have the better answer? And so you don't trust that what Jesus is telling you to do is the right thing to do. And so you push back. Jesus is okay with you pushing back. But it shows a little bit about our human nature and our lack of faith. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. Jesus is saying, look, trust me, I'm the light. You people walk in darkness because you don't know the light, but I'm here. Trust what I'm telling you and just walk with me. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. He's saying like, chill out. I got it. I'm going to take care of it. They would say, okay, sorry for doubting you, right? No, not exactly. They say, his disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. <laughs> They're thinking like, man, he's got a fever, so let him sleep it off. They totally missed the whole point. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. Okay, this is incredible. See, Jesus is actually saying, like, I'm glad I wasn't there. Why? Because you want to know something? God has such great compassion and empathy that was through Jesus that if he had been there, he probably would have just healed him on the spot because he loved his friend. But instead, for the glory of God, he's allowed, he allows the suffering to happen so that he can do something even greater. And so he says, man... I'm going to, I could have take care, could have taken care of it that way, but I'm, I'm glad I didn't because why? So that you may believe, but let us go to him. Jesus is thinking about you. He's thinking about the disciples. He wants us to have faith. He wants us to believe. It's doubt that leads to all this anxiety because we worry about all these things that we were never designed to worry about. We have too much information coming at us and we focus on the negative things of life. 
Jesus is teaching them a very clear lesson, like put your focus on me. Go all the way back to Exodus 23. Worship the Lord your God. Know who is worthy of your worship. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, you know, kind of like obligatory. I mean, she loved him, but, you know, it's already over, right? And in fact, it says, but Mary stayed home. Why? She was full of disappointment. She, she was probably like, why couldn't he have come earlier? Like, if he loved us, I'm sure you felt that way sometimes. Like, why did God allow this to happen to me? Why did this have to happen? Well, listen, when you when you try to think you know better than God and you don't really trust him, then he can't do the greater things in your life. We just have to have a little bit of faith. Jesus said to her, sorry, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. See, she's still focused on the past. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. So, okay. Does she say, well, can you make him rise right now? Because we really want him back and we really love him. and We weren't done and we feel like God wasn't done and we still had more to do. Nope, she says this. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. She kind of gives the religious answer, right? Like, okay, I know, like you can't do anything, but he'll rise again. Like that's the good, you know, Sunday school answer. But that's not what Jesus, you don't understand the power of who you're speaking to. What does Jesus do? Jesus said to her, he encourages her. He helps her with her lack of faith. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? He gives her an opportunity to restore her faith. He's reminding her about the messages that he has taught. He's reminding her about the truth of who God the Father really is. Her answer, yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Isn't Jesus amazing that he just kind of like, he cares for her. And so he gives her a little like boost of faith. And then what happens? She goes and she tells Mary. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Again, the finality of it all, like it's over. He's been in the tomb for four days. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Now, this is a, a, an often debated passage of scripture and I'm trying to like, I was thinking about this whole scene and situation and, you know, Jesus was he weeping because his, his friend was dead. I, I think he was really weeping over our human condition, like seeing this whole thing play out and the fact that people just did not know who was in their midst, that God is, does care for them, that God never leaves them or nor forsakes them. And then all they got to do is ask him and he wants to bring that resurrection power to them. I think he, he wept for the whole situation. And so he's moved in this situation. And then it says that people said, uh, then the Jews said, see how he loved him? Oh, but you got the doubters. They're going to come alongside. That's why I said the other week, don't try to get the world to try to love you because it's going to hate you no matter what. Listen to this. But some of them said, could he, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Like doubters, man, they're out there. They're going to be out there. You can't worry about that. This is why it's just focus on worshiping the king. Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance now, this is the part I want you to pay attention to because I want you to think about this. Here's the tomb. Lazarus has been in there for four days. Jesus could have just called it out 
and 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 the stone could have fallen down, rolled away, whatever, and and Lazarus could have came out of been this he, the whole the whole cave could have cracked open. He could have rose rose up from the top, but that's not how he does it. It's very important. This is where you come in. This is where your purpose comes in. Jesus said, "Take away the stone." He says, you are going to participate. He wants just a little bit of faith. He wants somebody to go, hey, I'm going to push the stone back. I believe that even now, Jesus can do this healing. You would think Martha would have that. I mean, Jesus said, you know, he's going to rise. What is Martha's response? But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there is a bad odor for he has been there for four days. She's like, Jesus, look, I mean, we're not going to do that to all these people here. No one wants to smell that. Like, it's over. It's done. It's gone. See, sometimes we're disobedient to what Jesus is asking us because we can't physically understand or see, or we think science has a certain, uh, a certain hold on a certain thing, but God is the one who created all of it. And so those laws of nature don't apply to him. He can do anything that he wants. He's the resurrection and the life. I think Jesus was weeping because people people did not understand who he was and why he was there to love them and to bring restoration to their lives. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? He's just wanting somebody to push the stone away. That's our job. That's our role. So they took away the stone. They finally did it. Somebody had to move and act. This is what I'm saying about our church. Like, this is why we had to leave the building. We got to go, we got to push stones. We got to go do that work that Jesus is calling us into. Then Jesus looked up and said, now this is where Jesus comes in. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me when he had said this jesus called in a loud voice lazarus come out the dead man came out this is incredible his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face jesus said to them take off the grave clothes and let him go Wow, this resurrection happens. Jesus stays where he's at and he tells the others, go and take the grave clothes off of him. Remember how I shared with you that we have been brought into purpose in the kingdom of God right here. Jesus having the perfect illustration of what that looks like. Jesus is the one that brings the resurrection power, but then others have to come alongside to care for him and take off the burdens, the grave clothes that have been dogging him for so long. For four days, he laid there with these grave clothes and he says, take them off. And so what a beautiful scene it would have been for them to take those off and hug him and he'd be rejoicing and coming out of this cocoon state. Like, this is the purpose that God calls us to. This is the kind of resurrection power. This is the kind of life that God wants to give you. But I think so many times we're held in bondage. There's things that we're, we're stuck in. We, we don't want to roll back the stone or we, we have these grave clothes on. We've, we've attached them. We've said it's my anxiety or it's my sickness or it's my depression or it's my lack of anything. And, and we sort of hold on to these things. It's like, man, do you un- not understand that you have the very power of the resurrection of Christ living in you in the Holy Spirit? My prayer at this Easter time is that you would truly take the grave clothes off, roll back the stone in your heart and say, God, I, I just take all of these things. I believe, I believe that you will bring resurrection power. I don't know how it's gonna happen. I can't see it. But I trust you and I'm just going to simply worship you and you will take care of everything else. If you're watching this, I would ask you to take those things to the Lord if you're by yourself. If you're with a group of people, man, can we talk about these things? Can we have some honest conversations? And then can we have people ministering to one another, praying over one another and helping take those grave clothes off, those things that have been dogging us so that we can live in in, in freedom? to be set free just like Lazarus was. This is the whole story of Easter, that Jesus sacrificed himself 
And then he showed that he conquered both sin and death. And the stone that was rolled away on his tomb was done by the Father. No human being needed to do that because it was divine intervention. But see, God invites us to be a part of that work. All you got to do is just call on the name of Jesus. I just want to pray as we finish this time together. And I want to pray for the Lord to just really stir some things. And I want to pray for vulnerability and openness in our groups. Lord, as we hear this message about rolling stones away and taking the grave clothes off, I, I know it's stirring some things in, in each person. And God, I pray for freedom. I pray that people would uh, find great release and resurrection in these areas of their life. Lord, let them not hold back in their groups. Let them be open and honest. God, as you, Holy Spirit, comes into the deep places that they need deep healing. Bring them from an old life into a new life. Tear off those grave clothes and let them know they are literally made brand new. Thank you for the gift of your resurrection at this Easter season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.